name is Brian Mason. And the title of this study is Rejoice in the Lord Always. Philippians chapter 4. Paul had that divine experience that he was able to meet every particular need that he was quickened by the divine experience and that the, the, the divine life flowed through him. It's no wonder that Paul, writing to the Romans, could say that in all things, yes, nothing could separate from the love of Christ Jesus. That's a divine quickening, the divine experience, and the divine overcoming. Because what is God looking for? He's looking that we will know him, and that we will be his, and that he will work through us. And Paul had all of these things. He knew whom he had believed. He knew whom he had been persuaded. Nothing at all could overcome Paul. Whatever the situation was, he could meet it because he had that divine life within him, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. And that this divine experience, which quickens, is still available today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the unchangeable one. He is the one who is life in the midst of these dark, dark days. Unless we have Christ as our life, unless we have the Word of God, both living in us and as our anchor, the living Word in Christ and the living Word in the written Word, then we are going to be tossed all over the place because the life of God becomes our experience and quickens us. And just as the life of Christ flowed through Paul, the life of Christ is still there to flow through those who are his. Not just a wonderful thought, but a glorious experience. And let us look now at what Paul has to say further in this fourth chapter of Philippians. Therefore, my brethren, so whom is he speaking to? Those who have Christ as their life those who have the living Christ living with his life in them and through them, quickening them moment by moment, day by day, week by week, constantly quickening. And that glorious life is still there today to be claimed. When we are Christ, not just believing in him, but belonging to him. Dearly beloved and longed for. Oh, there's a depth here, a depth of the love of Christ within Paul, speaking to those whom he undoubtedly had met many of them, led 
once to Christ whilst he was in Philippi. And in this letter, looking to encourage them, Paul's circumstances were very different now. He was in prison in Rome. But yet, he'd not forgotten these dear, dear ones, brothers and sisters in Christ in Philippi. And he looked to write to them, to send this letter, and that to encourage them to go on, knowing more and more and more of their position in Christ. And what is so missing in these days is that understanding, that knowledge, that longing, to know Christ as a living person and to have the Christ of Calvary, the Christ of the Resurrection, the Christ of the Ascension and the Christ who is glorified within us. Do you, do you know what it is to be glorified? That position which is there to be claimed for all who will come to God on God's terms. My joy and crown, yes, the life of Christ was written into the hearts of these dear, dear people. Paul saw them as in Christ and because he saw them as in Christ he saw them as ones who would reign with Christ ones who would know that they were seated in heavenly places in Christ yes I know that was his letter to the Ephesians but undoubtedly Paul, who knew what it was to be in heavenly places in Christ, had that longing that these dear, dear brothers and sisters in Christ would be brought into all the fullness of God in Christ. Have you that desire? Have you that hunger? Have you that thirst? to know all the fullness of God in Christ in these days. Because it is there, it is there for you to ask, it is there for you to receive. And it's there because it is still available. And it's available because God is the unchanging God. I am the Lord. I change not. We're not here to be tossed about with every wind of change as is found in much of the teaching today. Because much of the teaching within Christianity is not built on the foundations of the Word of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ. And Paul says to them, when he speaks of joy and crown, he's rejoicing in them because he knew that they had been transformed by the life of a person the life of the person of God himself. He knew that they were new creatures in Christ, that they had come out of the kingdom of darkness, that kingdom that belongs to Satan, and come into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, the kingdom which is all glorious. And that they were to Stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. 
Are you standing fast in the Lord in these days? Look into the world and you will see turmoil. You will see that there is no anchor there. You will see that there is great darkness. And that politicians are using the intellect to try and come to solve the issues in the world at this time. That there is not that realization that these issues can be solved by human thinking. Because they certainly cannot. Because these are spiritual matters. And spiritual matters can only be dealt with by that which is of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is calling these leaders to repentance, calling nations to repentance, because spiritual matters cannot be dealt with by natural means. Spiritual issues, spiritual beings, of the evil one cannot be overcome by carnal weapons. For the weapons of God are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. And those mighty weapons are prayer, are repentance, of having turned away from God. Nations, leaders, hear God speaking to you before it is too late. Now Paul he said, I beseech you, Odious, and I beseech you, Syntyche, that they be of the same mind in the Lord, that there would be unity there. And the unity is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. For there is no unity outside of Christ. In the world, there is no unity outside of Christ. Because there is a God of this world who is intent upon doing his utmost to delay God's purposes. Doing his utmost to Try and delay the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet, in the divine purposes of the divine mind, nothing has gone out of control. And that God himself will oversee everything that needs to be fulfilled for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming. Are you living in the light of the expectancy of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? There wasn't to be that disunity amongst the brethren at Philippi. For they were not of this world. They were of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God has God's standards, God's ways, which are so different to the ways of the world. 
And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help the, those women which labored with me in the gospel. That's quite a wonderful thing to read about. Those women who labored with Paul in the gospel. That these dear, dear women had a part to play in the work of God and the making known of the gospel. It's a glorious thing that God chooses whom he will choose to fulfill his own purpose. He doesn't choose the wise things of the world, not interested in those who are wise in their own intellect, those who think they know it all, but yet they know nothing because they don't know the mind of God because they despise his word and they reject the very fundamentals of the Christian faith. They reject sin and in rejecting sin they reject the Redeemer. They reject God's redemption to pay the price through the blood of God's Son. That's why God so loved the world that he gave his best. He gave that which was of his own love, his own Son. Oh, God's ways are so different. God's ways are to draw us to himself. But so many in this world think that they know better than God, think that there is no God, think that they are their own God. May God have mercy and still continue to draw to himself those who must still be saved before the Lord Jesus returns. Because, what does he say? With Clement also. Yes, there were different ones who had stood with Paul. Even in the most extreme of conditions, the most difficult of days. Yet because of that divine quickening, they were able to go on, meeting every barrier, every obstacle that the evil one sought to put in their way. And it is the same in these days, that wherever Satan, the devil himself, and the powers of hell, the powers of darkness, wherever they seek to place barriers into, in the way of the gospel going to every creature, they will not succeed. Because, why? God still has those who believe. And because they believe, it shall be so that the gospel will go to every creature. And these fellow laborers with Paul, whose names are in the book of life, and day by day, just as in the early days after Pentecost, there were those who must be saved. And throughout the world, Day by day, there are those who must be saved, gloriously saved, and brought into this living relationship with the living God through repentance and faith 
and cleansing of the blood of the Son of God, who made that perfect atonement for sin through his own divine blood. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Paul could say that because he had experienced day by day, right from the very moment that he'd heard the voice speaking from the glory. He'd heard the voice speaking from the throne room of God. And he had said, Lord, he had acknowledged that, that voice to be the one whom he had persecuted, Jesus. And Paul had gone through great suffering, through the years. He knew what it was to be despised and rejected, just as his master was. Yet, uh, yet, rather master, he was an heir in Christ, co-equal, heir in Christ. He had the life of Christ within him. And it wasn't so much as a servant, but as a son, a son of God, The Paul was being mightily used. The warning here, let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. In the light of the second coming, let us keep in mind, let us day by day walk in the light that Jesus Christ is coming. We don't know the day or the hour, but one thing is certain. This glorious book, the Bible tells us that he shall return. And there's no room for boasting of ourselves. We have nothing at all to boast in of ourselves. Because God chooses the weak and the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And it's just as well. Because otherwise if we were relying upon great intellect, relying upon our own strength, we wouldn't qualify. God chooses those who he can use. And to be able to use us, he needs our wills. Because when he has our will, he has our all. And Paul, undoubtedly, a man who was so well qualified in the Jewish religion, had to as it were, be abased. He had to be taken to that place where he did not rely upon himself, but relied entirely upon Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of Jesus Christ dwelling within him, guiding him, strengthening him, enabling him, empowering him. Do you know what it is to be a fool for Christ? Do you know what it is to be weak in yourselves? Do you know what it is to be so sold out to God that God can do whatever he wants with you, at whatever cost to yourself. 
That's why we can't do things in our own strength. Because what would we be doing? We'd be thinking, oh, we're wonderful, we're doing this, we're doing that for God. We're here to be those vessels for God. So that whatever is done in us and through us is for the glory of God. We're not on some stage where thousands and thousands are looking at a man or a woman, but hidden away here, so that God gets all the glory, living for God and for God alone. Are you living for God and living that whatever is done in you, whatever is done through you, it's not you that is seen. It's only for the glory of God. Thank you, Father, for thy word which always speaks to our hearts. And may this word that as it's been spoken by the Holy Spirit through this vessel of thine, have spoken to hearts that whoever listens to this message will see that you have your divine way, divine plan, to prov that through divine experience and you working your divine life through those who are in Christ, you can do whatever you want with us and that it will be done not for ourselves, not for people to, to even thank us. No, no, that would be drawing attention to ourselves, but only for thy glory and for thy glory alone. Amen.